Hello everyone, my name is Cristina and with the help of my classmate Andrea and Jorge, we are going to present you our presentation, a linguistic analysis of a written text called Technology in our daily life. This is the outline. Firstly, we will start with the contextualization, then the materials we have used. After that, we will analyze the level of English. Later, we will continue with the feature of the language of schooling. Then we will move to the genres in the text. And finally, we will finish with our conclusion. So let's start with the contextualization. We have divided into three categories. Firstly, the field. So the subject is natural science. The level is fifth of primary education, which means that the students are 10 or 11 years old. The lesson title is My Teens and Technology. After that, we have the tenor, which is teacher-student interaction. And finally, the mode, which is written language the, from the book's explanation and spoken language with the teacher explanation. The content that we have chosen from the curriculum of primary education from the Autonomous Community of Extremadura belongs to Block 5, Technology, Object and Machines. Our content are máquinas y aparatos, tipos de máquinas en la vida cotidiana y su utilidad, and la electricidad en el desarrollo de las máquinas. So let's continue with the second point, our material. This linguistic analysis was based on a real click textbook called Key uh, Science 5, written by Kinsey in 2010. So let's move to analyze the level of English. Firstly, we can find general English, which is BIX. It refers to the language used every day to help students to understand better the content. For instance, we have today, daily life, leisure, mobile phone, television, rivers, lake, there are, there were, recycle. Then we have academic English, known as CALP. This is more demanding and challenging language. It involves academic structure. As the text is adapted, the English is much simpler. Thus, we haven't, we are not able to find any example of academic English. And finally, the subject specific vocabulary, which is the language of the subject and is very technical. Some examples are electricity, generator, power lines, power station, water pipes, water treatment, wheels, full invention. And now Jorge will follow with the feature of the language of the school. Well, according to Slepergus, there are four different features of the language of schooling. Those are density and abstraction, multiple semiotic systems, organizational expectations, and technicality and authoritative stance. About density and abstraction, we could say that um, most of the academic tests are dense, because they have uh, more information packed in less words than a non-academic test, so you need a higher level of abstraction to understand them. In the text that we have analyzed, we found that the, the level of density is quite low because those are um, adapting materials. So the most difficult sentence that we found is this one. In science and medicine, there are new ways to diagnose illnesses with x-rays and ultrasounds. There are also some group of words that are also some kind of dense because of the meaning that they have, as electric light bulb or computerized wheelchairs. And uh, also, both of them need more abstraction to understand them. For example, you need to understand that bulb is a name and electric and light are adjectives that goes with bulb. And uh, there are also uh, some metaphors as power lines um, because they could find lines in other subjects uh, ma as maths. And uh, they are not the same kind of lines, so they have to understand the meaning that they have here in this specific text. Also, there are some new words that they have to understand and they have to abstract the meaning sometimes and other times they need to have a definition. 
and those walls have, for example, wires, filters, leisure, uh, generators. About multiple semiotic systems, uh, we could say that in uh, academic tests it's quite useful to find different symbols. So in this text, we haven't found many symbols in the text, but in some titles, as you can see here, there are uh, specific symbols and also some, in some activities. For example, in the title of recent advances, uh, we could say that there are uh, headphones, uh, the symbol of headphones, that mean that they have to uh, to listen to the teacher or the or the speaker. About organizational expectations, this is how the information is written in the text, or well, is organized in the text. Uh, there are two different pages, and both of them have the same organization. They have a page title, then they have uh, some text, and uh, every text have a text title, uh, a little paragraph with introduction, and then they have the development of the information. And near the text, there is always some extra information in with a picture. And finally, about technicality and authoritative stance. Technicality are those words that are subject related. As Christina uh, said before, we have electricity, energy, power stations and generators. And about authoritative stance is how the text has to be written. So uh, with both pages, we can see that they talk about technology. So they start with an introduction then they give some information about technology through the different ages and they and they have the final point about concrete technology used in a, a student's daily life. According to the genres in the text, we found two genres. The main one, that it's information report or descriptive report, and then another genre that it's recount, but it's only found in the first page we analyzed, that is the page 52. We say that it's a recount because with the structural features we can see the background information and then we can also find past tense and time elements according to the language features. According to a descriptive report, we said that it was that, a descriptive report, because of its structural features with general statements like water is essential to us but it needs treatment before we can drink it, a uh, sequence of facts like early advances and recent advances, and finally labeled illustration that support the written text. As you can see in the photos with the water, the tap water or the machines and everything. According to the language features, we found a lot of present tense, like we use, we have technical vocabulary like industry, inventions, fuel, mainly uh, those words that are in blue are technical vocabulary. Then relational verbs to define, categorize, name and describe, like where, and a nominalization that it's inventions. So finally, we got conclusions. And the main conclusion we got is that we have realized how important the language is regardless of the subject and how the teacher's small mistake can lead to students who are wrong learning because we didn't know the importance of knowing which text, like the genre of each text and genres are so important, but it's even more important to def differentiate them correctly because if not, it can lead us to wrong conclusions, like uh, not making any difference between an information report or an explanation. Another conclusion that we got after doing this analy analysis is that we could observe that adaptive materials tend to use a much simpler English, even though this book is written by a an English publisher that it's Dayton University, an university in Ohio, but it provides an unreal and less meaningful view for this language. 
uh, of this language to students because we couldn't find any passive voice that it's one of the main features of the descriptive report.